Salute, welcome to this um, video lesson on Capitulum Duo de Vicesimum, chapter 18. And we are picking up in um, the first section at line 37. Qui literas nescit legere non potest. Qui literas nescit, who doesn't know letters, or the person who doesn't know letters, legere non potest, is not able to read. Magister qui purros legere docet, the teacher who teaches the boys to read, ipse et libros latinos et graecos legere potest. Himself, ipse, is able to read potest legere, both Latin books and Greek. Nam is utramque linguam skit, for he knows each language. So ut uterque is each, meaning each of two. <laughs> And utramque there is the feminine singular accusative form of that, um, going with linguam. For he knows each language, meaning Latin language and Greek language. Quo modo parvus discipulus hanc sententiam legit? How, in what way, quo modo, does a small student read this sentence? And then we get the sentence. Miles Romanus fortiter pugnat. Now that sentence just means a Roman soldier fights bravely, but it's asking about how does a, a young Roman student read it. And so we get an example following. Discipulus quam quam literam cuiusque vocabulary sic ligit. A student, discipulus, reads each letter quam que literam of each word cuiusque vocabulary thus sic. Now, notice the quamque from uh, quique, quaique, quodque, um, meaning each. The quamque is agreeing with literam. And then cuiusque, again from the same word, this time in the genitive singular neuter, is agreeing with vocabulary. So, um, quique, just like quisque or uterque, which we saw up above, can be each or every. Again, the big difference with uh, uterque is that it's each of two, um, but the quisque or quique words are always just each or every of any number of um, people or things. So each letter of each word it reads, uh, the student reads in this way. M, E, me, L, E, S, les, miles. R O Pro M A Ma Roma N U S Nus Romanus. Okay, so that's how a student would read that, a young Roman student. Uh, sounding out the names of the letters, sounding out the sounds of the letters, sounding out the syllables. Ita quodque vocabulum cuiusque sententiae a discipulo legitur. So, ita, each word of each sentence is read by a student. In hoc sententia, in this sentence, vocabulum fortiter novum est. So the word fortiter is new, novum. Said qui vocabulum fortiscit, but for the person who knows fortis, hoc vocabulum quoque intelligit. He also understands this word. Nam miles fortis est, miles qui fortiter pugnat. For a brave soldier, miles fortis, is a soldier, est miles, who fights bravely. Okay, so fortiter is an adverb. The T-E-R ending makes it an adverb form of fortis, the adjective. All right, and I could do that with other words like keller, kelleris, kellere, quick. I could then say kelleriter quickly. In ludo, in school, puri non moro legere sed etiam scribere discunt. Uh, boys not only learn to read, but also to write. Quisque discipulus, each student, in tabula sua scribit, writes on his own tablet, eias sententias quas magister ei dictat those sentences, eos sententias, which the teacher uh, dictates to him. Now, dictat, uh, which I'm translating as dictates here, means reads aloud. Uh, now, if you read aloud for dictation, you read clearly, and then people copy that down, right? 
just to explain that if you don't know the word. Ita porri scrivere discunt. So the boys learn to write. So the teacher reads out loud, and then they copy down what he's saying. Magister discipulis imperat. The teacher orders the students. Promete regulas vuestras. So promete, take out. Regulas vuestras, uh, your rulers. Et lineas rectas ducite. And draw straight lines in tabulis, on the tablets. Tum scribite hanc sententiam. Then write this sentence. Homo oculos et nasum habet. A person has eyes and a nose. Quisque puer stilum et regulam promit. Each boy uh, takes out his stylus and his ruler. So the stylus would have probably been, uh, most of the time it probably would have been bronze or something, um, but it was used with a sharp side to write, and then you had a flat kind of wide side on the other end that was used for erasing on the wax. So each boy takes out the stylus and the ruler, et ducit leniam rectum, and draws a right line, or a straight line, I should say, a direct line, a straight line, in tabula sua, on his own tablet, tum scribere incipit, then he begins to write. Discipuli eandem sententiam, non eodem modo, sed varis modis scribunt. The students write, scribunt, the same sentence, eandem sententiam, non eodem modo, not in the same way, Notice both eondem and eodem come from idem, eodem, idem, the word that means the same or identical, and our word identical and identity come from that root. So they write the same sentence, not in the same way, but in various ways, said varis modis. Sextus unus ex tribus poris recte scribit. Sextus alone, or sextus the only one, of the three boys writes correctly. Homo oculos et nasum habet. Now you'll notice he's writing it in capitals. This is usually, they would have written on wax tablets probably in capitals because they were easier to do than the Roman cursive writing. They did a Roman cursive writing, oh, on papyrus and uh, vellum or parchment surfaces and things like that um, with ink but on a wax tablet or if they're making inscriptions or things like that they would write the capital letters so notice he wrote his sentence all in capitals notice that u's and v's are the same letter it doesn't matter they both uh, in capital script look like a what we consider a v but they didn't differentiate between u and v also notice there are no long marks because the romans didn't really write long marks Occasionally they did write apex marks, a little kind of, it looked like kind of an acute accent, and that would mark some long syllables. Sometimes they wrote two vowels in a row to mark a long syllable. Um, Roman spelling was kind of variable. Uh, it wasn't as fixed as our modern um, spelling. Titus sic scribit. Titus writes in this way. Homo hoculos et nasum habet. So if you look at that, he made one mistake. He added an extra H to hoculos. Should have just been oculos. Marcus vero sic. But Marcus in this way. Omo oculos et naso mabet. So he's dropped off the H on omo, um, making homo into omo. He dropped out the U in oculos. He dropped off the final M of nasum. And he dropped off the H on habet and made it abet. Now, the mistakes that Titus and Marcus are making, especially adding or removing H's, and then also removing the internal U from oculus, those are common um, errors in spelling that occurred because of the way people spoke. So the Latin H is a very weak um, sound, and so because of that, uh, sometimes people would put it in where it didn't really belong. Sometimes they'd drop it out if it did belong. The final M in Latin, as in nasum, uh, was actually pretty light. It was kind of uh, more of a nasalization of the final vowel. Um, that's sort of as you say it through your nose. And then oculos, a lot of times um, words like periculum, meaning danger, you would have people drop out the U and you'd get periculum. 
and so Oculos is kind of light like that so I'm sure some people at times when they were speaking quickly would say Oculos instead of Oculos um, so these errors that they're making are errors that would have been common among real Latin um, students and even adults well I think that concludes uh, this part and all of section one I hope you learned a few things there Valete omnes.